Dr. Beckman is a dentist who was born in Stockholm, Sweden, graduated in 1971. He now lives and works as a general practitioner in Italy near Venice, where he continues to fight the use of amalgams, root canals, and fluoridation. He's been a member of IAOMT from the start and began looking for metal-free solutions in the 90s, which led, sw led to switching from the use of titanium implants to zirconia ceramic implants. He has since 1999 put over 400 zirconia implants with a success rate of, I think it says 82%, Dr. Beckman? 82% success or 92? 92% 92 success. Please give a warm academy welcome to Dr. Beckman. Yes. There's no pointer in this one. No. There is a pointer, it's weak. So <laughs> okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, IMT members, I want to start with sending a greeting from the IOMT group in Sweden. We, we're a group that meet every October, and uh, they told me to say hello to you. I was in South Africa a few years ago and met with Ilona Visser. She has organized the first IOMT meeting in South Africa and uh, I talked to her a few days ago and she regrets she can't be here today but she says hi to you too and, and um, uh, so South Africa or Cape Town <coughs> is that far from the Arctic, uh, Antarctic zone and the South Pole. And Sweden and Norway, where I come from, is that, that far from the North Pole. So the IMT people, we are everywhere. We're from the North Pole to the South Pole. We're from the Philippines and Australia in the East and to the uh, United States, Brazil and Canada in the West. And we're doing a lot of good job out there. We fight against the use of amalgam, we fight against the root canals, fluoridation, but we're not only fighting against things, <coughs> we're leading uh, information, uh, we give a lot of information, important information about new, sane, and um, the new developments and, and sane products in dentistry and medicine. We have elaborated the protocol for safe amalgam removing, and we're whistleblowers when it comes to stop toxic uh, agents that are, uh, they try to introduce in our work. <coughs> I'll talk about that today, of uh, metals and, and ceramics, but I'll start with electricity. Now what happens when you put metals in the mouth, if you put a, a bridge or crown or, or just any metal at all? It corrodes. It corrodes and even titanic and gold corrodes. And it creates electricity. So when you have two metals in this uh, slightly sour environment, there's electricity coming. There's a tension uh, racing. My great-grandfather knew that. He, was, he lived in the 1800 and uh, he knew about this. This is not a new <coughs> ex 
experience. It's a fact. It was before that it was uh, um, um, developed. It still it was still there. My grandfather knew that too. And in his book textbook, 130 years ago, this phenomenon is described. And this uh, knowledge, very simple, that metals in a sour environment creates electricity, was um, abandoned or neglected or, or, um, by professors at the universities and dentists for nearly 100 years until somebody said, well, this, this, is, uh, this can't be uh, good. You <coughs> must be uh, something wrong here because what, what you should know, what the professors and the dentists and the, med and the doctors should know is that the nerve system works with a very, very low tension, uh, for instance, 9 millivolt. And uh, if you put the metal in the mouth, we heard Jess yesterday explain that better, uh, you can raise the tension in the mouth 50 times more. So, um, the, the electricity is not only between the, the, um, the two metals. If you move a metal in a, um, <coughs> in a magnetic or an electric field, you get uh, induced electric electricity in, in the metal. And if you, uh, the cell phone, apart from the um, heavy, strong signals they emit also creates a tremendous magnetic and electric field just a few inches from your mouth and half an inch from your brain. Worst of all metals is the merc mercury from amalgams. In Sweden and Norway, <coughs> we don't fill our kids with amalgams anymore. We stop that. We hope the rest of the world will come after. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have done a lot of lobbying to, to reach that, but it's, of course it's not for the patient's sake, it's for the environment. Mind you. Um, it'll, but you do put a lot of other metals in the mouth. Uh, metals of different kinds. Some of the metals is screwed into the bone. <coughs> and uh, uh, the metal, for instance, titanium is a metal. Ceramic is not a metal. Now, if you think of using ceramics in dentist works uh, and you chew on it, what happens? It breaks. So, um, but then they're not, uh, they're also ceramics that is resistant, like zirconia. And zirconium is an element and could have very different shapes. For instance, uh, precious stones and the dioxide of zirconia is the raw material material to uh, form implants. <coughs> I'd like to do a handout here. Oops. I'm 70. <laughs> uh, here. Just, you open it and take a look at it. It's uh, zirconia implants and uh, I want you to feel what it's like. I want you to see the, the shape of it, the, the very strong, uh, hard and smooth surface. And um, I want them back because I'm having patience uh, uh, on Monday when I come back to you. Here. The, Sorry, I can't jump back. Now, 
what did you know that what you're holding in your hands is the future. This is the future. This is what you should give to your patients to be sure that you put in a precision elaborated product in the mouth. This is, of course, it's Swiss perfection and it's elaborated in Switzerland. It's used in the nose cone of airplanes. It's used as a heat barrier in nuclear power stations and it's used in, as a substitute for the small ears here in, in the, the three small bones here could be made of zirconia. And we have long time had zirconia <coughs> implants instead of articulations. So this is, um, has given me a tremendous uh, new way of life in dentistry. I put uh, four, over 400 implants and have a, a succession rate of 92%. That means that I feel safe with the um, zirconia implants. It, if you do that, if you use it, it, don't, it does, doesn't only change your way, your professional life, but it also gives you a new way of thinking. If you put in an implant in uh, zirconia, in ceramic, you can't put a, a metal crown or bridge upon it. You just start to avoiding and, uh, metals and try to, to substitute or have solutions that is metal-free in, in all kinds of <coughs> restorations that you have in, in uh, the mouth, like crowns, bridges, partials, and so on. And once you've done this, you'll see that uh, this follows automatically this uh, new way of thinking, which is a benefit for the patient. The protocol, uh, surgical protocol for the implant <coughs> is the same as, as uh, every surgical. There's no mystic for that. You have to have enough bone around it. You respect time for he bone healing and there's limits for how much you can load it. Uh, in, in this world of ceramics, the metal has no place at all. And you can offer to your patient a sane and secure solution, free from uh, al uh, allergic agents or things that, or, or uh, materials that burn or irritate or destroy your body functions. And then you put the bridge on the lower part here. Yeah. <coughs> now the producers of titanium, ordinary implants, try to con you and say, well, uh, we have uh, zirconia posts on our implants. That doesn't make it biological. The uh, part you screw into the bone is still uh, metal and uh, as well as the spark plug it conduces electricity but they try to sell it to you with all means possible and uh, uh, just like spark plugs sometimes you have to take uh, an implant away for one reason or another <coughs> and usually Oh, I would need some water here. Could somebody <laughs> give me uh, water? It's just a bottle. Okay. <laughs> it could be various reasons that it looks ugly, like this place, or uh, it's uh, placed in a position that's not convenient. Thank you. That's very good water. A little bit colder next time. <laughs> so, the normal way to take away an, uh, an implant, I don't know how many of you have tried it, but that's the work, I can assure you. you. You make the flap, you start to drill away bones, you drill away the bone around it, 
and you go further and further and further and further down because the ultimate half millimeter of the implant is still keeps it very strong. It's really a work to take it out. And the risk is high. You, you, it's very difficult not to touch it with the drill. And if you use a tree, tree fane, it's the same thing. You, you touch the um, implant with a, with a drill and spread titanium all over the place. So the easiest way is to simply screw it out the way it came in. You can you take the post away and and um, put a, uh, a screw in, and then you use a um, key uh, like this that is screwed on clockwise to the screw with uh, dents or teeth uh, that grips the very sizes in this kit that grips uh, firmly to the implant. And then you simply screw it out clockwise. This uh, rat ratchet can give the implant more than 200 Newton, so most of them do come out. And voila, there it is. Now the hole that is left, you can just rinse it and leave it to, to close. There's no hole or <coughs> nothing to um, to uh, heal that is bigger than the hole where, where you have the implant. Or you can rinse it and put in a zirconia implant if the patient wants that instead. Uh, slightly bigger and uh, um, this lady had six implants in titanium, wanted to change them. So I took three at a time and used a bridge, Toronto bridge, to, to, for a cover. And if the patient don't want a bridge, you can um, give possibilities to have a, a, a overdenture instead. And <clears throat> you can cement a sort of button on the implant, which corresponds to the locator caps, caps that you have inside the, the um, overdenture. And they're also in PEK plastic, so you don't, uh, they were in titanium form. Now, nowadays they make them in plastic too. So the whole thing is with no metal solutions at all to keep uh, partial uh, in place. And I can assure you this is a very safe way of, of clicking fast the overdenture. And it's also very easy to keep clean because the, the very smooth surface of, of the zirconia, it's hard as diamond. The um, tartar just doesn't accumulate on it, and neither do plaque. It's very plaque resistant and very easy to keep clean. So for the patients, just to brush with a normal uh, toothbrush, and if you have clean implants, you have clean gums, you have healthy gums too. Uh, instead, if you have this, I mean, who gives this to the patient to look at in the, mar in the mirror every morning when they brush their teeth? Uh, apart from that, it's ugly. It's also tremendously difficult to, to keep clean. It's not that it always looks like this, but those who have uh, bridges like this, that, or um, bars like this, that doesn't have any plaque on it, they have been spending time to, to clean them and various instruments. It's very, it's very difficult, and the normal patient doesn't have neither the capacity most many times there's elder people too that don't have the um, capacity to, to clean their bars. So this is this is a solution that is really final and very uh, very attractive and uh, gives satisfaction. If you have a very thin bone for three, four, five millimeters between the mouth and the sinus, you can drill a small hole and use um, an instrument which ends with a small balloon that you blow up with physiological uh, solution. You can add a little contrast to it so you see what happens. And then you slowly blow up the, the balloon and makes the 
Schneider membrane uh, um, detached from the bone. Then you withdraw the balloon and you have the uh, room under it that you can fill up with um, like this. And this uh, room you can fill up with uh, <coughs> bone harvested from the patient, calcium, or, uh, or bone chips from the nearest horse. I mean, it's anything. You can also leave it because the blood cloth creates um, bone without any, uh, without any help. And then you add the implant, and you can see the, the way it's, this is the membrane has been lifted, and the bone chips that gives you the um, maximum now down was 15 millimeters. That is half an inch, I think, nearly. <laughs> so this is a very, uh, instead of making the big operation where you have the flap and sinus lifting and with instruments and you, you risk to, to um, uh, rupture it, over the implants, I often use some um, prosthesis like this one, the flexite, or, or you can also do splints. And when the implant is ready <coughs> to load, you cement um, a post on it, and the post you can, uh, you can give it the shape you want to. There's also angled posts if you need that. And you can, you can just uh, drill on it or shape it the way you want with an ordinary diamond. And then you take the impression, the good old-fashioned impression of, of the tooth, and uh, the lab sends back the crown to, to cement it. There's no transfer, there's no analog, there's no one impression taking after the other. There's no, because uh, uh, you risk every, every time you do a new step in the impression taking, if you lose, you risk to lose precision, and then you cement the crown. This is newly cemented, so the, the papilla is not, um, it's not there yet, but many, many times around the, the especially where there's no metal in it, uh, the, the papilla's fees are, ah, here's it. Here's a crown and they start growing and, and fill out the gap between the teeth. That looks very normal. When do you, when is it you need the implants? Well, that's when dental care has gone off the road and you, uh, you have to take it out. Sometimes you do succeed to fill it and it looks very nice. Uh, this is a uh, <clears throat> colleague of mine who, who did this from a few weeks ago and uh, she used to uh, she managed to, to fill also the, the small lateral um, canals so you, the aim is to fill the whole canal grande as we say in, in Venice but if you, you look at it from it looks from this side it looks like it's filled, but if you look at the um, canal from this side, you can see that it's not very, it's not very filled at all. It's, it's instrumented with a round instrument. It's filled with the aperica and the cementum, but the rest of the canal is stretching out like a dark cave behind the, the filling, the, the therapy you've done, and you don't see it. And it's not only this problem, but you have also the small tube tubules that uh, on a square millimeter you find between 20 and 50 thousand openings and they are really extremely small and if you put in a <coughs> one rooted tooth put them one after another you reach uh, three kilometers of and that's an enormous area for the bacteria to, to live in and these uh, mi microtubules never get rinsed or filled by the dentist they're full of biofilm and bacteria, and if the, uh, if the um, tubal is that big, the bacteria is that big, so there's plenty of room to move around. When you've done everything, I mean everything you can do with a tooth, you've done the caries, the filling, uh, oops, uh, root canal, um, 
a post, um, brass post, <coughs> amalgam uh, um, post on it, and then a gold crown, and uh, to crown it all you do an apicectomy too, and close it with some amalgam, then you take the whole thing out to save the life of the patient, and you can put an imp uh, zirconia implant in instead. Those are, are the adventurous. There's also the new uh, plastic implants uh, made of PEK uh, plastic that is used also in medicine, in, for instance, to block between the vertebras and those in the back. Sometimes <coughs> there's no need for implants. This man came to me. He had uh, this bridge made on three molars, one there and two there. I had to take this one out, that's why I came, because it was infected. But he had this, this is an old traditional gold bridge with acrylic facades, and he wanted to change it because her, his wife uh, thought it was ugly, it started to get very used. But uh, he'd never had any problems with it, never loosened anything, and he was chewing all right with it. So, uh, go ahead, be uh, courageous and <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Okay. I have to read this also. <clears throat> I do not have any financial interest of a product in my talk or with any companies offering grant monies for these continual dental and medical education programs. I want to say that the, there's very few different uh, Ciccone implants in, on the market, and they're all exactly the same. They're equal. There's no difference in quality. It's just a shape that varies, but the quality of the Ciccone is the same because it all comes from the same company that, that uh, makes the base, um, the, um, the Ciccone itself, the raw stuff. <coughs> 